for the night trunkers of Britain's industrial roads another long journey is finishing. The combination of tough driver and reliable truck is once again arriving safely at journey's end. Together they brought thousands of pounds worth of goods across hundreds of lonely miles. Now for driver Ken Woods, the transport depot means release from hours of concentration. Dead on schedule, a Nuffield built truck has again safely delivered its load. It's an upside down life for men like Ken. But while the mechanics take over the huge trucks in the depot, Ken is on his way home to sleep. No rush hour crush for him, just a wave to a friend you and I never see, the early morning milkman, and he reaches the home of the Jackson family with whom he lodges. Today is a special day for the Jacksons. Mr. Jackson is a foreman at the factory where Morris commercial vehicles are made. And today, his 15-year-old son is joining the firm as an apprentice. Johnny is a bit scared at the moment and rather envies his father's appetite. But Mr. Jackson has been doing this routine for 25 years. Oh dear, Johnny really is off his food and he's in no mood to stand Eileen's teasing. For Eileen too, it's a big day. She works in a flower nursery. And for the first time, she's in charge of the decorations for a big wedding reception. And although she doesn't appreciate it, like the rest of the family, her day too will revolve around transport. But heck, look at the time. Only half an hour to go and it takes ten minutes to get to the factory. It'd never do for a chap to be late on his first day. It's a great moment when you walk through the gateway to your first job. Boyhood is behind. And ahead lies a lifetime of opportunity in the career you've chosen. Today, not even the gate men know you. Tomorrow, you're as much a part of the place as the clock on the wall. Mr. Jackson is early today so that Johnny can have a quick look around before he reports to the supervisor. On the silent production line, his father briefly explains the layout to him. And then, since he has to clock in, leaves the boy on his own for a few moments. Now, what to explore first? You know, it'd be fun to be a driver like Ken. Maybe they'll put me onto chassis assembly. No, the engine is the real heart of a vehicle. Everything else can be perfect, but if the engine breaks down, the rest is meaningless. I'd love to know all about engines. That's what I'd really like, to work on diesels and understand them. But when his father indicates some of the features of the engine to him, Johnny wonders if it's all a nightmare. Valves being operated through rocker gear, wet cylinder liners, shrouded inlet valves and cavity-type pistons. Do we expect him to know all about these things? But there's the whistle. Explanations will have to wait. It's 7.30 the assembly line is moving smoothly into production. Commercial vehicles of all sizes flow again to customers who know what they want. Their drivers must be safe and comfortable. And so into the design of these cabs go the latest results of modern research. The customer who orders one of these vehicles does so because he has to handle really tough jobs. That's why Morris commercial cars provide an extra strong chassis, rigidly braced with sturdy cross members and heavy duty steel wheels. The exceptionally robust rear axle, with extra strong springs, will safely carry the maximum permitted gross load over any road. Step by step, as they move along the assembly line, the various trucks take shape. Every working part has to be engineered specifically for heavy duty. Indeed, the whole vehicle has been designed and built to thrive on fast working schedules. When they come from this production line, the owner knows he's getting rugged quality and value that only British craftsmanship can supply. The apprentice supervisor is an experienced officer who guides the boys in their careers, so that both they and the firm may reap the greatest benefit from the individual's ability. Pride in the firm one works for is important, 
and Johnny's pride is stirred as he hears of the early triumph of Morris commercial cars. Will he too see such great changes as have occurred since the first model was produced in 1924? What will the next 30 years bring? What will the vehicles be like when he's foreman? Now steady Johnny, you're not halfway through the first morning yet. Your sister is taking things calmly, although this is her big day too. But the routine things have to be done before the flowers can be transported to the reception. Fragile things, aren't they? Have you thought how you'll get them there uncrushed? But don't worry, the experts have solved that. Just drink your tea and forget it. And you have a cup of tea too, Mrs. Jackson. Don't worry whether your provisions will arrive from the market. There's a Morris commercial vehicle delivering goods somewhere at every tick of the clock. And you, Ken, keep your head down and recharge yourself with sleep for tonight. While you're sleeping, the truck has been unloaded. And now it's being checked and serviced in readiness for another long journey tonight. These men know that adequate servicing is vital to haulage work. When you drive out from the depot tonight, everything from the chassis upwards will have been thoroughly examined. Before an apprentice begins his training, it's part of my job as supervisor to take the boys round the factory so that they'll know how their work will fit in with the general scheme of things. Now here, for example, is the test bed for diesel engines. For the first 40 minutes, the engine is motored gently and then it's adjusted for idling. Finally, it runs at maximum governed revs. We record the results of these tests on a special graph so that at a glance, we can see the detailed performance of every engine. That's a useful history of a future reference. <laughs> Maybe some of this is beyond you, Johnny, today, but soon when you started your training, all this information will fall into place. Along this assembly line, the Morris one-ton delivery van is being built. Every component is as thoroughly pre-tested as the engines we've just seen. For both in local delivery and long-distance carriage, the van will have to stand up to a lot of hard work. There's the pressed steel frame, which is the basis of its great carrying capacity. The two factors govern the overall design of this van. To give maximum loading capacity and to keep operational and maintenance costs to a minimum. Now these one ton and 30 hundredweight chassis are offered with a choice of engines. Either the compact overhead valve for cylinder petrol engine, or the new 2.2 litre diesel engine which combines the liveliness of a petrol engine with the economy of an oil. Either engine makes this Morris van thrifty to run. And later, when the wheels are on, one of our inspectors tests the steering to make sure that it's getting its full play. Meanwhile, the body of the van is being assembled too. Into this has gone the same thought, care and attention to modern requirements. A smart appearance is an unpaid advertisement for the business owner. And the interior design ensures 235 cubic feet capacity for the one ton and 275 cubic feet for the 30 hundredweight vehicle. It's simple to modify the van for special requirements by the fitting of racks or trays. And the flush fitting sliding doors on the cab permit loading or unloading quickly and safely in the streets. And while Johnny is watching, others are working. Men like Mr. Jackson, who also started here as an apprentice. And just as the son will benefit from his father's experience, so the new Morris vehicles are benefiting from the great experience gained in a quarter of a century of building Morris trucks and vans. Body styles and performances have made vast changes. The only thing that hasn't changed is the Morris insistence on quality and dependability. From assembly lines to complete vehicles. Here in the dispatch department, in orderly lines, are rows of Morris commercial trucks and vans. Most of these are for export and are awaiting shipping space to take them overseas. Here, Johnny can see the full range of Morris commercial vehicles, including the massive seven-tonners with their superb diesel engines, and the latest light range of J2 types. 
Together they cover every angle of transport requirement. Our day has now advanced to the time when Eileen must take the flowers to the reception rooms. No trouble at all for the flowers, there's plenty of room in the van for them. But the staff is a different problem. They must use the minibus. Here again there's really no trouble, because although there are only two or three extra assistants, this bus with its overhead valve engine is as economical to run as a family car. Actually, this latest Morris commercial bus is an extremely handy little vehicle. Seating ten passengers with its single rear door, it proved very useful later in the day carrying guests to and from the reception. Everywhere you go, you'll find other members of the Morris commercial family hard at work. They're a tough lot, these commercials. Here's a five-ton tipper hard at work. It has a capacity of five cubic yards hydraulically operated. The spacious cab is made of welded steel and is immensely strong. Other features are a rear axle of the fully floating type and differential assembly and driving shafts which can be dismantled without removing the rear axle. In every detail, this new tipper is powered for performance and built for economy. Meanwhile, the florist's van and the minibus are making light work of the traffic. In delivery work, quicker deliveries mean less cost and therefore more profit. Its maneuverability in traffic is important, as is the matter of parking. The turning circle of this van is only 36 feet, which allows the driver to maneuver with ease and confidence in the busiest streets or loading yards. There'll be no long trek from the van to the reception rooms for Eile. The small space is vacant outside, and the van backs easily into it. The goods are easily accessible, too, for these rear doors, when required, can be made to fold flat against the sides of the body. Down at the transport depot, huge crates are now being loaded onto Ken's lorry in readiness for another all-night journey. When Eileen and Johnny and Mr. Jackson have finished their day, Ken will be just starting to transport this load to a destination several hundreds of miles away. And from other ends of Britain, similar trucks will be setting out on similar journeys. These trucks running with unfailing punctuality are a reflection of the design and workmanship built into them. Only the finest and strongest can survive and maintain the tight schedule of the nightly haul. For Johnny, the tour of inspection is over and classes have begun. Instruction hasn't ended with school days, and from now on there'll be lectures intermingled with demonstrations of practical work. This class, under a skilled instructor, is learning the basic facts about the diesel engine. The instructor stresses too how in the Morris engines, most of the components, such as the pistons, connecting rods, valves, etc., are completely interchangeable. As he explains the principle of the engine, Johnny finds many of the points which the supervisor mentioned this morning already beginning to fit into place. And then the hooter marks the end of the class and Johnny's first day is over. For Ken though, it's just the beginning of another upside down day. Breakfast around tea time, and then he'll be away again before the family arrive home. Eileen's job is almost over. It isn't every young florist who has the opportunity to arrange the decorations at such a big wedding. Her expert eye tells her the blossoms are as fresh as when they left the nursery and will help to make memorable someone's happy occasion. A last look around to make sure everything is right and that's the end of the day. Back to the nursery will go the van, ready at any time to deliver other delicate consignments in the same perfect condition. And over at the factory, the men who build the vans are finishing their day too. For most of them, the going home routine is the same as usual. But not for Mr. Jackson. Tonight, he waits for Johnny. And each night from now on, they'll return together to the Jackson home. A new tradition has begun. And if the two youngsters are a little full of themselves that night, who can blame them? Pride in the work they're doing will add to their skill and efficiency. The tradition of British craftsmanship is one of the solid foundations upon which the reputation of Morris commercial vehicles is built. Night at the depot is no time for sitting around and talking. It's the time for cargoes to start rolling. Ken knows his truck has been fully serviced. 
But even so, no trunker will leave the depot without a personal check on all essentials. Ignition, lights, and then a physical check of the loading. Guy ropes must be just right, not too taut, not too slack. A sharp kick on each tyre and the experienced driver can tell from the sound whether the pressure is low. A flat tyre can be dangerous with this heavy load. A habit formed in the days of petrol. Ken checks his diesel fuel, although he knows his tank full will see him through the night. From now on, the trunker is on his own. A vehicle worth several thousand pounds and a load that may be worth four times as much. These are his responsibility on a lonely night drive that can be full of dangers. And yet such men as Ken would choose no other job. As he rolls from the depot, whatever lies ahead in the darkness, whatever sudden danger looms, he'll have only his own skill and a dependable vehicle with which to meet it. Quickly, Ken settles into his comfortable, adjustable seat. Hands on the old familiar wheel, a head unrestricted vision, at his feet the roar of the engine which is always ready to urge his truck tirelessly on. City traffic doesn't worry him unduly, for the excellent steering and brakes make the truck as easy to handle as a saloon car. Nevertheless, he'll be happier to leave this territory of hand signals and pedestrians and gain the open roads. open roads where the night trunkers rule and have their own code. On, off, on with the lights and the man in front knows he wants to overtake. When his tail is clear he gets the signal to draw in and never forgets to say thank you with his own tail light. The hours are ticking by now but the schedule has to be maintained. No stopping for the dubious pleasure of roadside companionship, just keep the wheels turning. Fast, friendly pubs where those whose work is done gather for beer and dance. Maybe there is a moment of envy for the thing he misses, but the wheels must turn. And like his fellow trunkers, he has a load to take through. The Morris commercial truck seems tireless, and the well-ventilated, comfortable cab minimizes the inevitable strain on the driver. A cigarette helps until it'll be time to pull into a roadside cafe for a meal, a rest and a chat. Here, under the welcome sign of the BMC Drivers Club, as in hundreds of similar transport cafes, other trunkers will be taking a cheap meal and talking of drivers and trucks and loads and roads. In any one of these cafes, on any night, Ken is sure to run into mates who will give him a friendly greeting and warn him of treacherous pieces of road if conditions are bad. It's a tight, loyal comradeship that binds these men together. A comradeship as sound and reliable as the trucks they drive. But soon, sooner than they'd hoped, it's time to start the wheels turning again. Out go the drivers whose accents come from the four corners of the British Isles. And away into the darkness roll the huge trucks, headed for maybe London or Cardiff or Liverpool or Glasgow. Each powerful engine sends its steady note cutting through the black silence, until it seems that the whole island echoes with the note of the night trunkers. And so, on and on through the night, goes Ken to the steady hum of his engine. 
on to the dawn of another day of commercial activity. Activity through which the vehicles of the vast Morris organization weave their way. Carrying the burden of commerce with economy, with safety, and with reliability. <laughs>